Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. In this episode, I'm going to continue my discussion on the cost of various C++ constructs and debug builds with a discussion of default member initializers. Now, if you're not familiar with default member initializers, they were introduced in C++ 11, but I think they're not having the adoption rate that they should yet. So again, as we did in last week, I have a comparison of G++ and Clang side by side and I will have them both with a optimization level of zero. So we're talking about basically the cost of using various constructs in our debug builds, because all these things just go away in optimized builds. So let's create a struct, and it has a single integer member variable. And in our main, we want to return something from our struct s. So we will do s dot value. And I find it interesting in this case that G++'s build is much smaller than Clang's. So we will actually say that we want the value of value in our struct s to be 5. So if you're using C++ 03 or 98 you probably would have done something like this. And you would have created a default constructor that sets the value to 5. And now we notice, interestingly, that G++'s code balloons compared to Clang's. But what we're seeing in both of them is that we are assigning this value 5 to some register that's been allocated for int value, and then we are somehow returning it from main, but there's lots of various things going on here. So this is the C++ 98 way of doing things. And let's look at what our efficiencies are. We've got 26 instructions in our G++ build, and we've got 20 in our Clang build. So the default member values, initializers in C++ 11, allow us to say simply equals 5 here. Let's do this slightly differently and create our s on the stack and return s.value. There we go. And we will go back to our... So this is the initial code we're looking at. We have 26 and 20. It's a slightly different version. We're not creating s in the return statement, but that's okay. This is what we want to do for this example. So notice we've got 26 on G++ and 20 on Clang. So we're going to go back to using our default member initializer like this. And we see that Clang actually doesn't change at all. But G++ is able to generate much more efficient code. And it, it seems to actually be doing perhaps a little bit of inlining even with O0. So this is something um, that not only makes your code cleaner because you avoid having to create a constructor, but it also makes your code more readable. Someone just glancing at the code is going to be able to see that the default value of this member value is 5. And in some cases, at least when you're doing debug builds, the compiler is going to be able to generate more efficient code. So it's important to point out that when you start turning on optimizations, these things pretty much just go away. Now Clang requires O2 to make it go away. G++ requires O1. And the, there you have it. This still is just compiled away. But it's possible that by gaining extra readability, you'll also gain some debug build efficiencies if you use default member initializers. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.